Good morning, family and friends. Pastor William Gilmer, you the Guiding Star Missionary Baptist Church. We greet you this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. We pray that God has kept you and that God will continue to keep you. Today, as we come to worship the Lord, as we come singing praises to his name, as we come to give God thanksgiving and honor him for being a great God, for being our protector, our keeper, and our all in all. Before we bring the word from the Lord, we will have a selection by Deacon Howard Brown. As we get in the presence of God, we pray that you would pray with us, pray for us, that God will use us to speak a word to you, to myself, and to the dying world, that each person might be encouraged to hold on, to hold out, and to trust in God. We will now have a selection before the word of God.
God, we know you're able. So we turn right now to you and pray that you would open up hearts that have been closed. Open up hidden ears that have not heard and give sight to blind eyes to those who have not seen your grace and your mercy. God, we thank you. And now as we preach your uncompromising gospel, we pray that you would use us to speak a word for you. Forgive me of my sins and my struggles. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray and ask. Amen. And amen. Again, Psalm 119, 49, and 50 reads. Remember your word to your servant, in which you have made me to hope. This is my comfort in my affliction. That your promises give me life. This morning, as we bring your word from the Lord, oftentimes in our lives we are bruised and we are battered. We lose our way and find it hard to muster up the strength to put a smile on our faces and in our hearts. It seems at times that the light of God's grace and mercy refuses to eliminate in our hearts. That allows us to put a smile in our souls in thanksgiving in our mouths. At times it's hard to call on the name of God because of the situations in our lives. Sometimes we feel like we climbing up the rough side of the mountain and things just will not go our way. When we pray, we seem that our prayers go unanswered. And we seem, we find ourselves falling into in a, a state of discouragement and into an unresponsive state that will not allow us to see God's joy, God's blessings, and God's restoring power. When things continually spiral out of control, when we lose our footing in life, when life throws us one curveball after another, it gets hard to get over the hurts of life. Situations are hard and they grip us in our hearts and in our minds. And every time we find ourselves believing that things are going to be all right, life has a way of knocking us down once again and cause us to lose sight of the goodness of God. Every time we seem like we get a grip on life, things again spiral out of control. And it causes us to wonder when will our struggles be over. When will things continue to go, as things continue to go wrong in our lives and everything seems to go against us, it is seemingly seems that spiritual roadblocks have been placed in our lives. As many of you know this morning, speed bumps are meant to hinder your progress, to slow you down and to cause you not to go through life in a fast manner. For so many of us, that's how we live our lives. We live our lives as if we are going over one speed bump after another. We seem like those speed bumps come at the wrong time. Sometimes just like you're when you're driving your car and you hit a speed bump too hard, it messes up your suspension. Sometimes the suspension in our spiritual lives get knocked out of alignment because we do not find ourselves huddled under the presence of God. Instead of us going straight, our alignments or misalignments pull us from the left and to the right. But I must 
tell you this morning that I am not naive and nor do I believe that you and I, as God's children, can live trouble-free lives. Yet my hope is in an everlasting God. For me, I stand on Christ, the solid rock. For all other ground is sinking sand. I also understand that sometimes in our lives, spiritual road bumps are placed by Satan. I understand that Satan places in our lives unwelcoming and unwanted roadblocks that keep us and hinder us from seeking the will of God in our lives. Satan tries to destroy the very fiber of our souls and displace our prayers and confuse our minds. He tries to downplay the word of God that has been planted in our hearts, in our minds, and in our souls. He tricks us and plays games with us to keep us from trusting in God. He places traps in our lives, things that you and I enjoy that will cause us to not trust in God. Not only will they cause us not to trust in God, but they allow us to be tricked and deceived to think that we can sin and God is okay with it. Satan has put so many traps in and snares us that many of us are ready to throw in the towel and just give up. But there is an antidote to your problems and your situations. There is an antidote to your stress and to your mess. For just a few minutes, I would like to speak to you on these words. The hope that gets you over your home. The hope that gets you over your home. When you and I look at or do not walk under the power and anointing of God, when you and I do not walk under God's grace and God's mercy, when you and I do not walk under this power that God can supply from on high, it is nearly impossible for us to reach a plateau of peace that God has given us. It is nearly impossible to lay down into green pastures and to walk beside still waters. It is nearly impossible to know that God will comfort you, bring peace into your life and speak to your situations that your situations might change. When you and I find ourselves focusing on our problems instead of the one who can solve them, it is hard to get over the hooks that are placed in our lives. This morning, because of faults, because of failures, because of hardships, because of heartaches, you might find it difficult to keep a flicker of a flame of the Word of God burning bright in your life. You might find it difficult to have hope in hopeless situations. You might find it difficult to trust in God when you're in your midnight hour. You might find it difficult to trust in God when you can't sleep and you're restless. You might find it difficult to trust in God when everything around you is falling apart. You might find it difficult to trust in God when your needs are seemingly not being met. I need you to understand this morning that Satan will sneak in and steal your joy. Satan will rob you blind of uh, God's grace and God's mercy. Satan will rob you from your self-esteem and your self-worth. Satan will rob you of your dignity and your hope. Satan will rob you of your goodness that can only come from God. Satan will have you believing that you ought to sell your soul in order to gain the world's riches. But I need you to be reminded this morning that when we wallow in misery and keep company despair, God cannot get glory from our lives. In those moments that we find ourselves needing to 
drawn closer to God and God drawing closer to us. God, through the power of his Holy Spirit, can empower us to run on just a little longer. God, through his power, can enrich our lives to understand that no matter what goes on in our lives, no matter how many speed bumps or no matter how many humps are placed in our lives, we can trust in him. Yet so many find themselves putting their trust and faith in temporal things. Things of this world that cannot help us in any shape, form, or fashion. So many of us, instead of trusting God, call on mama and call on daddy. Too many of us are trusting in brothers and sisters, friendships and confidence. But you must understand this morning that those who you trust cannot help themselves, nor can they help you. As the writer pins his thoughts in this psalms, he asked God to remember his servant and for God to give him hope. We must recognize this morning as this man identifies himself as being a servant. Most of us in our lives think we are too sophisticated and have arrived to the point that we cannot take on the menial description of a servant. Yet 1 Peter 2 and 16 describes a servant of God as one being free to act within the bounds of God's will. You see, to be a servant is to understand that you're only free when you find yourself walking in the will of God for your life. When you look at Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, Jesus had a servant's heart. It is said of a servant's heart that it is by one's meaning that they extend a hand to another. Understanding that person's circumstances and situation and having compassion to meet their needs. I tell you, saints of God, Jesus meets our every need. Jesus has compassion that lifts us up when our heads are bowed down. Jesus has compassion to put us back together again when our lives are broken and our lives are shattered. Jesus, through him giving of himself, has compassion to free you from life's miseries. Yes, there is hope in knowing Jesus as your Savior. It is said of hope, yesterday is history, tomorrow is a mystery, today is a gift of God, which is why we call it the present. Someone this morning needs to know that God is a very present help in a time of trouble. Someone needs to know this morning that God will, and God will and is able to comfort you when you feel like you can't be comforted. You see, this morning, comfort is a state of physical ease and freedom from the pain that we face in our lives. It is the easing or alleviation of a person's feelings of grief and distress. Many of us find grief today because of the loss of loved ones. Many of us find the grief in our lives today because we are separated from our loved ones. Many of us are feeling filled with grief because we cannot touch, we cannot feel, we cannot hug, and we cannot look into their eyes and tell them that we love them and we miss them. Many of us find these times of uh, the coronavirus a time of distress, a time that we really want to throw up our hands and throw in our towels. But I need you to understand this morning, God has promised to give you comfort in the midst of your trial and your tribulation. God promises to give you a hope that will get you over your comfort. 
It is said of suffering. Suffering means to bring into one's life pain and inconveniences. It is said of suffering that it is to lose that which you have gained. We must understand that suffering is a part of the believer's DNA. Christ suffered, so shall we. Christ suffered in the Garden of Eden when he had drips of blood coming down his forehead because of the misery and the pain that he was to suffer. Christ suffered. He was spat on. He was beaten. He was bruised and he was placed on the old rugged cross. He bled, he died, and he was placed in the grave. Yet, he rose again. You and I can rise above our situations, above our struggles, and above our strongholds. You and I can rise above our sin that has found itself in our lives and so easily besets us. We can do this because Jesus rose so that you and I can have a right relationship with God. This morning I must warn us though that oftentimes we suffer not because of what Satan has placed in our lives, not because of what God has allowed to take place in your life. We suffer because we sin and we fall short of the glory of God. We find that we suffer because we go against the will of God for our lives and we walk out of the things that God has placed in our lives, things of God that only God can supply. The good thing is this morning there is things that we can do that can get us over our hearts. First of all, as Jesus said, you must be born again. Secondly, you must have Jesus as your personal Savior. You must throw yourself at the throne of God and seek mercy for your life. Once you call on the name of Jesus, God will hear your prayers and your sufferings. God will hear your supplications and do as only God can do. He will pick you up and turn you around and place your feet on solid ground. When we find ourselves suffering, when we find ourselves forgetting the presence of God in our lives, when we find ourselves suffering because of the things of this life, we must remember that we are prisoners of Christ and not of our circumstances. We are prisoners of Christ and not of people. We are prisoners of Christ and not to our situations. We are prisoners to Christ and not to our sufferings. To endure suffering, we and I must keep going back to the things that we know to be true of God and of God's words. We must continue to do, must continue doing what God has called us to do. We must trust in God to deal with those who oppose us and put roadblocks in our lives. When the writer thinks about the promises of God, as the writer sits back in his lazy boy, if you would, and reminds himself of God's promises, it gives him hope. He understands that by the nature of God, God's promises are trustworthy. They are faithful and they never fail. The writer understands that God's promises are something that you and I can stand on. This attribute of God means that God is unchanging in his character. It means God is unchanging in his will and in his promises. You see, this morning you have to understand with complete confidence and absolute faith that God will see you through. If God brought you to it, God will bring you through it. Because of this, the writer explained, God, you preserve my life. To preserve means to maintain something in its original state or in its existing state. As believers, as we begin to hear the word of God, I have a question for us all. Is your hope producing patience? 
What does your hope look like? What does hope look like in the life of a believer? Why would the psalmist tell God to remember your words to your servants? As if God needs reminding of his faithfulness. As if God needs reminding of his promises. As if God had failed in being God and not keeping his word to you. We must understand this morning that although God does not need reminding of his words, nor his promises, God does prefer and expect that we show dependence upon him in calling on his name. This dependence produces in us the believer's life a healthy faith that trusts in God, that stands in the hope of God, in obedience to the God we serve. This dependence upon God produces what God's will is for our lives. On last week, we spoke to you about holding on through faith. We came to you from Hebrews chapter 11, where it reads, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We understand that through this text, faith is an action word. Faith means we cannot see the outcome, but we know who holds our hand. Faith means that we cannot, we do not know what lies ahead, but we know who holds our tomorrow. In other words, faith means clinging to the hope that God will eventually triumph and bring victory in our lives. As believers, we can trust in God because God is faithful. God is trustworthy. God is all-powerful. God is all-knowing, and God is all good. As the word of God indicates, God is the provider of every good and perfect gift. In this, we as believers ought to realize this is where our hope comes from. As you and I take a deeper look into certain words found in our text, we will find that only those who have a relationship with God can relate and experience to the depth of the writer's words. We must understand that in our greatest moments of need, God's word springs forth in our hearts and flourishes like the mighty rushing waters of a river. First off, in order for God to remember his words to his servant indicates a relationship with God. You and I must have a relationship with God through Christ our Savior. Only those who trust in God through faith will become the servants of God, i.e. the children of God. We must be born again. Yes, sir. It is only through the blood of Jesus Christ that bridges us, uh, bridges our gap between heaven and earth. It is only through Jesus, blood on the cross of Calvary, that nullifies our sinful state and redeems us by his blood. Scriptures teach us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's why we must put our hope in nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. Secondly, in order for us to have a hope come from God, one must have had their needs met by God in the midst of their troubles. God had to fix your brokenness and my brokenness, my sins and your sins. God had to wipe away your shortcomings and my shortcomings. God had to heal your pain and take away your sorrow. You see, when God meets our needs where we are, we find ourselves sometimes in the gullies of life, in the back alleys and back corners, we find ourselves in simple, shameful states, dirty, filthy, unworthy, and untrustworthy. But yet, God meets and supplies our every need. It is only when we are rescued from our sufferings of this life that we find comfort in the words of God. When we've been through the storms of life, and those storms and those battles produce scars that produce wounds, that produce a need for healing and a need for hope in a hopeless situation. It is only God that can mend our brokenness. 
It is in these times and in these situations that we come to the full knowledge of God, that God is the only one that can preserve our lives. When we are kept by God, we understand that how to un we understand how to stand on His promises. We understand that promises, understanding that His promises produces faith. And those faith produces hope. And hope produces a steadfast faithfulness in the God we serve. When you and I read the 63rd, 63rd division of Psalms, where David finds himself, himself in the wilderness of Judah, all alone in no one's company but God. It is here, as it is on many other occasions, that David found strength in knowing that God stood by his side and that God stood by him in the midst of his troubles. In his troubles, God gave David hope that got him over his tongue, that, um, that hinders and impedes one's ability to go forward into green pastures, to go forward into that promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey. It is, hinders us from being who God truly wants us to be. David declared, O oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you, for my flesh longs for you in a dry and a thirsty land. Here David displays a steadfast hope in God. This should suggest to you and I that our first obligation of the day when we take the breath of the morning is to acknowledge God and seek him early in the morning. We further find that David's words to seek God suggest a hope in God, but also indicate a time of trouble. As it is with David, it is so with us. When we feel as though we are out of the presence of God, it creates a longing and a void in our lives. We find ourselves out of and from beneath the covering of God, where there is no protection for the storms of life. The rain continues to beat upon our brows and we find ourselves being washed up and washed in away and drowning and sinking in despair. It is only in the presence of God that we can find comfort that expresses a joy in knowing the God of our salvation. You and I must be determined to worship God no matter our circumstances. We must be determined to bring praises to God no matter the storms in our lives. We must be willing to and determined to praise God when Satan has come into our lives. Don't you know the word of God says Satan will flee when we praise and honor God. David declares, because of your love, your loving kindness is better than life. My lips will bless you while I live. We find here that God's loyal love invokes in David a sense of worship, a voice of praise, and a shout of victory. Hebrews 13 and 15 reads, Therefore by him let us continually offer the sacrifices of praise, that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks, thanks to his name. We must understand this morning that although the Old Testament sacrifices are obsolete, we as believers are called to offer spiritual sacrifices to God, which include our praise, our possessions, and even our lives. Scriptures teach us that those who try to save their lives will lose it. That's why Jesus states in Scripture that only what we do for Christ will last. Yeah. Romans 12, 1 and 2 Reads, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body living sacrifice, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, or be ye renewed by the transforming your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. This is why David in verses 4 and 7 can declare, I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hand in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and with fatness. 
My mouth shall praise you in my joyful and with joyful lips. When we lift up holy hands to the Lord, it expresses a deep dependence upon him. When we express this dependence upon God, and couple it with the acknowledgement that God is all-powerful, that God is full of wonder and majesty. It allows us to come before God in praise and in worship. And when we come before God in praise and worship, it refreshes and renews our strength. A hope that is able to get us over our hopes. When we find ourselves beneath the wings of God, covered in grace, blanketed in mercy, dipped in love, drenched in his spirit, lifted by his love and filled by his spirit, empowered by his strength, encouraged by his might, comforted by his hand, and lifted up by his strength. Then and only then can we search in no hope in our lives. Then and only then will that hope become real in our souls and in our spirits. When we know that we can't be moved, it's like getting a shot of adrenaline. It gives us the necessary power to keep on keeping on in the midst of our storms. As the writer pens the words, the Lord provides comfort because it preserves my life. Even in the most, in our most challenging of circumstances, God's love is unfailing. For the Lord is our strength and our salvation. As we hope in God, our hopeful trust does not disappoint. Hope is the fulfillment of God's will in our lives. Hope is the anticipation of a favorable outcome under the hand of God and his guidance. To be more specific, hope is a confidence in God and God alone. If we can hope of God is our hope of yesterday, which guarantees that God will be our hope tomorrow. What God did in our lives yesterday guarantees that God will be our provider on tomorrow. You see, it is only God that gets us through what we're going through. For God alone is our rock, cannot be moved. God alone is our refuge, our fortress, and our provider. It is only in him that we can be secure and find security in unsecured situations. He did this by providing a sacrificial lamb in Jesus Christ, our hope and our Savior. The one who died on the old rugged cross. The one that was bruised for our iniquities and wounded for our transgressions. The one who had our chastisement of peace upon him. For by his stripes are we healed. This morning, if you're hungry, is that you feel abandoned by God. Psalms 10 and 12 reads, Praise, O Lord. Lift up your hand and forget not the afflicted. This morning, if you're hung, is that it seems like the world is falling down all around you. Psalms 46 and 1 reads, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in a time of trouble. As Emmanuel, God with us, Jesus is the personification of this song. For Jesus himself is our strength and our refuge and victory in a time of storm. This morning, if your heart is feeling afraid, Psalms 23 and 4 reads, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You prepare us a table in the presence of my enemy. Just as Jesus is our shepherd and provides and gives provisions, God will work out the things in our lives. This morning, if your heart is feeling guilty about your past, 
Psalms 51 and 10 reads, Created me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. If your heart makes you feel like you've been forgotten by the God, Psalms 139 and 7 and 13 reads, Where shall I go from your spirit? Where shall I free, flee from your presence? For you formed my inward parts. You needed me together. You needed me together in my mother's womb. This morning, if you're home, is that you feel like you're losing faith. Psalm 62 and 2 reads, He alone is my rock and my salvation. My fortress, I should not be greatly moved. If your hook this morning is that you're burning hanging on, Psalms 86 and 5 says, For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call upon you. Give me, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my plea and sin your grace. If your hook is you need to recommit your life to God, read. Psalms 116 and 8. For it says, For you have delivered my soul from death, my ears, my eyes from tears, my feet from stone. This morning, if you need to be reminded of the goodness of God, Psalms 103 and 2 states, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits toward me. And family, this morning, if you know God is the one who got you over your hump, if you feel like celebrating in the midst of your storm, if you know God is the one who gave you hope that supplies you in a time of trouble, if you know it is God that has kept you in the midst of your storm, if you know that it is God who has seen you through troubled times, if you know that it is God that has led you, led you beside still waters. If you know that it is God who has opened up the windows of heaven and poured out blessings that you have not room enough to receive. If you know you've been dipped in the blood of Jesus, raised by the power of Jesus. If you know that you know that it is God who has kept you. Psalms, one, Psalms 95 and 1 says, Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down before. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For you see, God is a good God. And this morning, he is the only one that can give, give you hope give you hope that can get you over your hump. This morning I implore you and beg you and ask you to trust in God. To lean on Him. To depend on Him. For God will give you grace. God will give you mercy. God will supply your every need. I pray as we come to a close that God will supply your needs. That God will be your strength to get you over your hopes. And that God will give you hope to hold on in a time of trouble. We pray that as God is keeping you, and though you may not physically be able to come to the house of prayer. We pray that you find yourself praying to God, reading God's word, and allowing God to keep you in the midst of your storm. So we be led in a song. We just pray that you trust in God and that God will see you through. We'll be praying for you. 
that you pray for us, that God will keep us in the midst of our storms.
So do we. 